This isn't really one that I was planning on sharing, but I found it so intriguing, I figured I had to make a video here on the Swatch 150 channel. So my Rolex Daytona has just returned from its first full service. Now I bought the Daytona about four years ago, shot a video with it recently here on the channel, but pretty much for the first three years of ownership, I wore it daily. So it got very scratched, very dirty, the glass had a chip, it was not exactly in the best state of condition, but I booked it in with Watches of Switzerland, where I recently purchased my Oyster Perpetual 41 mm that I showed you in the previous video. And it's been away for, I think about eight weeks, eight to 10 weeks or so. The service cost, well, we'll get to that in a moment, but it's just come back. And the way it's packaged and presented, I've found fascinating. So it comes back, in this very nice little Rolex box. We also have the guidebook here, and the book pretty much outlines the Rolex World Service and what they do, what happens within the service. A bit of history, a bit of information, a bit of the details and general process. And it's quite expensive sending a watch off like this for service. I remember when I bought it, they basically said, keep it running until it feels like the time is out or until it feels like it needs to go for a service, whether that's a few years, five years, or even 10 years. Well, I went for it at four years and this is going to be the result. If we open up this box inside, we are greeted by a lovely green leather pouch that holds the watch. And I find this super, super smart for traveling in future. That is how I will carry whichever spare watch I am taking with me. We'll open that in just a moment. Also in the box and packaging, I've got the receipts, the guarantee card, business cards, and some of the stickers that were actually on the uh, main parts of the watch to protect it until I had taken them off myself. But obviously I've done so to have a little look at it. So if we open up this very, very nicely presented pouch, we've got the two poppers on the front. This unfolds and then we have the little compartment with the watch itself tucked in. So very safe for transit, very safe for travel, very snugly fit inside there. And then even the watch, it looks brand new. It looks completely and totally brand spanking new. If I take it out from this piece that sits within the bracelet inside the strap and even pop off the protective cover that we have around the bezel, this is lovely. This is so nice. It felt when opening it at the store, at the Regent Street store, that I was basically buying another new watch again. It looks magnificent. The 116-500LN Rolex Daytona with the white face, nicknamed the Panda with the chronograph, the ceramic bezel, a beautiful, beautiful watch. But this is where it's really interesting because this was in a state and a half and it's now completely pristine. It's, it's like it's brand new, the way that the bracelet has polished up is just beyond words. It's, I, I never expected that was going to be possible. The amount of dirt that was between each of the links, the amount of scratches that were on the back of the clasp, the amount of general marks and bits of damage that had happened to it in that time, I never thought it could turn out so perfectly. Now, when I was dropping it off and the team at Watches of Switzerland did an inspection, they had noticed, for example, a tiny little chip. I think it was around the one o'clock mark on the glass. And that was an option that I could choose to either replace or to leave. I think once they get to a significant size, you pretty much have to replace the glass. And obviously the new glass also has the almost microscopic, impossible to see little Rolex crown down towards the bottom of it. That was an option that I think was only about 80 pounds. I say only because I expected it to be significantly more. I thought on a watch that cost in the region of 9,000 pounds when it was new and is worth three or four times that now, I thought it would be a much greater expense to change the glass on it than it was. And obviously through this process, they go through everything uh, mechanically, the timing, making sure that all the finishing and details and the crowns and the pushers all work as they should. Everything's fully functional. So you're probably wondering, total service cost as per the receipts that I have here, 830 pounds. Now that is a lot of money, 750 for the service, 80 for the glass. And then if they found more things along the way, they would have sent me a notification that this needed to be changed or that that extra work needed to be done. I was really interested though, when I dropped it off for service, they asked all sorts of questions as to how I used the watch, what I noticed about the watch. For example, how did I store it overnight? Did I leave it facing up, facing down, on its left, on its right, all sorts of different angles 
intervals, how frequently did I allow the movement to run out of battery and completely stop, how often is it running, all sorts of things I suppose to try and work out the small intricacies and details from one to the next as to exactly how well it's running, how well it's going to be keeping up. So that whole process was very smooth. I anticipated it to take a little bit longer than it did. I think returning back in just eight or nine weeks or so was actually really quite impressive. These are serviced here by Watches of Switzerland in the UK, so it doesn't have to go uh, internationally to Switzerland or anything like that. And at the moment it's just sitting because truth be told, I've not yet worn it again since it came back. In fact, I've not even put it on my wrist. So I should probably give that a go, remove my moon swatch from completely opposite ends of the spectrum, but two watches I suppose equally with a lot of hype in the watch world, that being the Mars moon swatch. And this interestingly has a very different clasp to my Oyster Perpetual. And I'd like to get the two watches together um, to show them to you on video because I think it's very interesting to see them and to see some of the differences. Oh, it's so nice. I, I mean, this was always the watch for me that, you know, for a long, long time, that was the one that I wanted to get my hands on to eventually wear and to enjoy. And I've mentioned before that I'm certainly very conscious of the value of it, but I love a watch like this, a small face, sporty nature, a sports bracelet, a sports appearance, and just a story behind it and the connection to motorsport with the Daytonas as I've discussed before as well. And it's, so, it's just such a really, really, really nice watch. There is a reason that they are in immense demand and stores like even Watches of Switzerland on Regent Street, the flagship, only get a handful of them a year. This, this actually I was lucky to buy uh, in Germany. Uh, well, as I said, about four years ago or so and will treasure forever. A very different watch to the Oyster Perpetual. And in fact, I've actually still got one of the pieces of protection on the back as well. Not sure if I'm going to be easily able to remove that or if that's going to be an off-camera job. Yeah, maybe that's one to do a little bit later. So overall, very, very impressed with the Rolex service. Um, a little bit anxious, you know, owning two now and who knows what in the future of the costs of maintaining them all. But ultimately, they only need the servicing if you're wearing them super regularly and running them down. But these are things that will last a lifetime. This will hopefully be something I can pass down in the future. This is something that is just a really you know, special thing to be lucky to own, to be the custodian of until who knows when down the line and to have packaged it back up like this so beautifully, as I said, to have the option now to use this travel case for onwards journeys just makes life even more pleasant. I mean, argu arguably you should get something when you spend so much on the service process, but I think it's just that extra kind of touch and luxury attention to detail that makes you feel good about owning such a thing because at the end of the day things like this are very expensive purchases they are huge commitments they are very serious things that we do think about when we go out and buy you know i don't think many people purchase something like a rolex daytona just on a whim and it comes all beautifully packaged with the original guarantee and with a service warranty as well uh, i think for 24 months so everything really that you would want out of it and pop it back away ready to take home and store away very, very safely. I'm sure you'll spot it again on the channels, on Schmiel 50, on the Schmuseum channel. Maybe again, as I said here, if we take a look at this compared to the Oyster per Perpetual 41 millimeter as well, at some point down the line. That's it for now though. I thought that was pretty cool to see how the Daytona came back from service.